Oh. Dingbats. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Hello and welcome to Mostly Off Topic, starting Laughter of Dragons session 23? Somewhere in the low 20s. Okay. Um, it's session 12, episode, I'm going to say 23, but I got the last episode number wrong at the start. So anyway, um, yeah, stuff happens. Um, I'm joined by Ben. Howdy. Joe. Hello. Matt. Well, hi there. <laughs> you went James Bond. I think it was Sean Connery era James Bond as well. I think he was. I was inspired by Ben. Excellent. I, like what Excellent. I can't help but think we're getting a little bit too, you know, full of ourselves, really. We're playing to the camera, guys. We're playing to the camera. So we said we'd never do this. As we're wearing our own merch. <laughs> not available for purchase anyway. It's not at all. <laughs> joke. joke. It says, mine says mostly off. <laughs> um, <laughs> joke got some printed like ages ago, um, just for us to kind of like wear as a, as a kind of like. Um, just a thing actually wasn't it just a bit of a gift do you know what I, th I think the hope was that we would be able to uh run occasional events at patriot games and uh, that, that was, like, what was that six months before yeah the COVID? and then uh, fair enough um so anyway we're going to be playing laughter of dragons um we are just getting a bit full of ourselves. We just need to take the edge off a little. Um, but so there will be spoilers for Laughter of Dragons. This here, Laughter of Dragons, the booksy thingsy. There will be spoilers. So if you're playing Laughter of Dragons, you're going to be spoiled. If you're um, maybe going somewhere around Erebor Dale, um, maybe some of the stuff that in the adventures your lore master is going to just subtly introduce. By and large, but not entirely always, I stick very closely to the book. Um, so it's going to spoil stuff, basically. You've been warned. Um, also, as I go down my list of things, um, it's highly likely that we're going to get interrupted in the stream. Somebody's internet's going to go down. A small child is going to kind of come through. Um, so if you're watching this on YouTube, you'll have just seen an incredibly bad, slightly lazy edit as it went uh, into the next thing. If you're watching it on Twitch, then you might just see a little bit of a, hey, we're not around at the moment, screen come up. Also, we are just playing some One Ring. Um, we don't always do things right. We can sometimes like deviate slightly from some of Tolkien's flavour. But yeah, we're just playing the game that we're playing, having the fun that we're, we're, we're enjoying. Um, so clearly, if you're here because you want to see how the One Ring plays, you're on like episode 23 so you're not here because you want to see how the one ring plays but you know we 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 just play the game that we play we're, we're not particularly special or shining exemplars we kind of think we've got a good grasp of the rules because joe's here and therefore our average rules knowledge is pretty high but, but that is just shows you how outliers can can disturb means i'm just sitting here forgetting all the rules basically week by week probably best advice i don't need to remember them yeah, and also the dissonance of seeing me butcher them would, <laughs> would eat away your very soul. Um, uh, but having said that, we are really grateful for the views, really grateful for the comments, really grateful for the interaction. Um, we ha did our What Are We Doing When I Pledge for Second Edition? And we got a massive amount of engagement and kind of like just chat from that. I really love just talking to other people in the hobby who enjoy the game, seeing what you're doing. Um, not not through any kind of like trying to build an engagement or anything, just because we enjoy chatting to people um, and seeing what's going on down there. Um, so please do let us know how we're doing. Let us know your thoughts. If you're enjoying it, if you don't enjoy it, if there's something you disagree with, then let us know. We'll consider it. Um, and um, and we just let us know. Anything. Let let us know what kind of voices you want Paul to try out in the. Uh, <laughs> That's right. And if you want Matt to be running uh, the starter set, please let us know that. <laughs> oh, man. I'm so excited for Matt to be running a, a scenario from the starter set. It's going to yeah. be... It's, it's going to happen, isn't it? Yeah, Matt. You're still... Your heart's still in that, yeah, right? You're overselling it now because I'm going to be like worried about the delivery aspect of it. But... Okay. No, that's, on the the thing. that's the thing. That that's the whole thing is the delivery. You don't need to worry about the delivery of it because it's going to be amazing. Yeah. Oh, with beer, anything be, can be delivered. 
question of quality is secondary, obviously. <laughs> so, so on that on that note, let's start. Let's get going because otherwise the intro takes up too much time and people look at it and kind of go, "Are these guys ever playing a game?" Um, what happened last time? We got some orcs. Yeah. We found Domi. We've been looking for Domi. And uh, things turned nasty. There were hobgoblins. We smoked a couple of hobgoblins. <laughs> we might have hidden some donkeys. Uh, it's all part of the plan. We had this amazing plan. You know, dwarves and their plans usually involves hiding a donkey. And uh, what else did we do? Yeah, so we did all of that in order to rescue Domi from some bad folk, including uh, a dude from Dale. The dude from Dale. Vigo. Uh, Vig. Not Vigo. I think he played Aragorn. Vig, Vig. Vigo. Vigo <laughs> Mortensen. <laughs> That's right. He was there. Oh, it's crazy. <laughs> with his, um, with his uh, wooden feet. Um, so, yes. Yeah, so, so you kind of we started the session. If not the episode, you were you were tracking um, Domi down. You found Clifford, made your way through the difficult journey um, through the waste. This kind of ashen, burned charcoal copse, gritty dust, life drained from it. It, it was once part of the kingdom of Dale until the desolation of Smaug. The kind of chill winds coming off the withered teeth. The trudge of the journey not helped by Torg smoking his last as the pipe weed bag was finished. And you did indeed find Dermy. You found that there were two groups there who were at slightly at odds. There was a group of hobgoblins and there was the um the band of men led by an orc. Um when two of the hobgoblins left on patrol you kinda of jumped them. Um Lovetar leading the way um and then hid their bodies hit the donkeys the half the hob, the rest of the hobgoblins headed off to search for their companions and then you jumped the the men and the the orc slaying them and as as we finished last session domi with his steel gray eyes his aged skin and the, the tiredness um of his face of him and his two fellow dwarven companions who had been forced to dig out the, the entrance to the ruins look to you and just thank you thank you so much for rescuing us and that's where we finished last time and where we'll pick up this time yeah. so the, this this place is it is not safe at all basically that's the sense i get is that we we're under pressure now because um so domi and his and his crew they were they were enslaved basically and being tasked with with yeah. burrowing with delving into this cave where this kind of yeah. artifact this mythril shirt mythril shirt the, the, the oh, mythril shirt yeah, yeah that that was that was crafted by the dwarves and and um so the, given so to... that's the... sorry paul uh, as I uh, say, given yep. to the um, to the Lord of Dale, um, uh, who who buried it with his with his son. Can I go have a look at the work that they've been doing so far, and see if I can estimate guesstimate whether it's worth us pursuing that or just getting the hell out of it. That's a good shout. Yeah, yeah. Have a quick look to estimate the. Uh their progress uh I, I think we need to assess kind of people's health as well because i seem to remember lothar being pretty in a bad way and domi's just i mean he's quite old so he's knackered and uh wasn't one of his companions got a bit stabbed uh, a little bit worse for wear a bit stabbed up yeah that's right yeah so i think we, we kind of need to assess um how people are i don't know what you're talking about talk i'm killing it Clearly, just just look at me. That's, Blood's that's dripping just, from his exactly. <laughs> that's just right. a little blood. I'm fine. I'm I'm more than fine. I'm ready. Ain't to got fight time more. to bleed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's it. Um. So yeah, you, so, uh, so so who who wants to assess the dwarves? 
I mean, I, have, I, have, I was going to say you're the only one with uh, any healing, aren't you? Spot of healing, yeah, one spot yeah. in healing, but um, I'm not. I don't think it's worth me trying to do anything meaningful with that. I think just get an idea of how, whether we can move, because my sense is that we either need to delve into this cave or hot foot yeah. it somewhere so, to safety. So, so let, let's just let's just kind of consider that that moment then. So, so. Um... So you, you're there, you're, you're in the in the waste, uh, a land so fundamentally tainted by shadow that there's no there's no route for rebirth or regrowth at this at this moment in time, and you're you're stood before what looked to be at least dwarven inspired, if not dwarven made. You can see the two stone pillars, and and whilst the whilst it, the the ground's not so excavated that you could just bundle down there, you can kind of see the shape of the entrance into what you assume to be the the um, the location of where the um where the treasures where the, the burial chamber is domi is, is looking at you kind of face careworn from the from the years um but that's just accelerated the dust kirking he's quickly moving back to the injured dwarven com um, partner the bodies of the um of the dead that you've you've slain kind of like lying scattered over the battlefield and even you're not quite sure how quickly, but the, the birds starting to circle, the black spots of the birds starting to circle all kind of like above you, swooping down, just taking a little look at what's going on, um, kind of like seeing seeing what's going there, and a cold wind kind of blowing in off the off the waist. So you you, may, you kind of you can make a healing roll to like assess the the level of injury to those those individuals and if you want to make like a I guess a craft roll or if you've got the tunneling trait you could invoke that to, to kind of establish how much more effort might be involved in getting into the place uh, yeah, yeah I'll... why don't you do that then Sig and I'll uh, Sick. I'll try and <laughs> sorry yeah <laughs> <laughs> Who is this previous character of mine of which you speak? This, oh, it's called <laughs> Hobbit. This, this waif-like Hobbit, just in the darkness at the back of the place, puts an arrow in your eye. Yeah. <laughs> hiding behind a tree. Oh. Or, or actually, more realistically, for the ending, like the rolling I was doing for him at the last time we played him, misses spectacularly every single time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'd like to go have a look around the, the entrance yeah. and see if I can okay. ascertain whether we can what we can do with it. I don't mind rolling crash on my, that. Where my healing roll. I have Sauron. I have Sauron. They're they're basically <laughs> zombies. <laughs> no. Um You okay, cool. Um Is it, a, a buzzard's head. pecking Domi's eye out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're like, you're fine it'll grow back <laughs> uh, 14 great success on my uh, craft for right. the okay yeah um so you got great at the trait because tunneling i think would uh, would apply uh, unfortunately i it's it's in the same row as my law so it got maxed out about five sessions ago yeah we have now if i was allowed to search <laughs> i was allowed to search around the entranceway <laughs> i mean you can search if you like but i think for what you were trying to achieve um, yeah Cross is more, more applicable. I'll, I'll search shortly uh, to ascertain the right rock to pull out to collapse the said tunnel later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so, so this is how well set the fire. Um, so one of the reasons for calling for the, those roles was because I think this information will help you form your objective for the session as well. Mm. I think it, it has. That was uh, my thinking. It's direct, yeah, direct bearing on that. Um, so, as far as you can tell, um, uh, to our, the the wound for the dwarf um, is probably mortal, certainly in this kind of area. Um, Domi looks really just quite tired and and haggard, um, but there's a level of um, there's a level of energy about him that. Um, that seems to have kind of like risen, having kind of seen you guys rescued, uh, rescue him. He's, well, he's he's sturdy. He's not going to give up if he's not mortally wounded, like his companion. Yeah, 
Um, um, and you think that there's probably, if you were to put your back into it, um, with the mattox at your disposal, and you're kind of like um, you know, the the three sturdy dwarves. There's there's probably not much more than a few hours worth of digging to to be able to create a sufficient passage for you to enter in um, to the chamber. Maybe maybe a couple of hours digging if you really kind of like were quite tight on how much you wanted to kind of space you wanted to create. Okay. Right. What do you reckon? Why don't we ask Domi? It's his quest, effectively, to find this thing. Does he want yeah. to push on, or does he want to pull back? I mean, this is his life stage. work, from what I yeah. can Well, this is it. Well, that's what I want to know from him, if he's worthy and to, if, I think if it's going to cost him his life and the life of this... I think it's a given he's going to go for it. I guess... I guess it's on us, like, whether we push for it. I think I think this is it. Like, I, think I want to get to... it. Like, as... It, as 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 sir i digging in underground spaces to find lost items is like his total bag <laughs> that's what he's all yeah. about be, it, be that digging for like knowledge or digging for items yeah let's let's help him i think sounds like a good why don't, idea. why don't we just lay it out and say let's let's do it that's our objective is to get in there get it and get out of it get to safety and find find the thing i guess like there's a there's a there's a counter ticking down, isn't there? Because you know the buzzards are circling, and those old goblins might come back. back. That's going to lead stuff to us, uh, and also there's hobgoblins who are likely to come back or bring others. So we kind of need to really get to it. I think. Yeah. Okay. Is it we set them? Get in. Get it. Get out. Yeah, well, I don't know if we'll be able to get out. Do you think we'll be able to get out? We don't. We don't know. What. Get in. Uh, maybe get in, it'll... lock it behind us. Get to safety. I think is the is part of a. It, that's like the su sub goal, isn't it? Mm. Get in and make it safe somehow, or or find a path to safety. Because we're, 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 we're dwarves, we, could... we could always dig our way out from the inside of this place. Yeah. Yeah. In the next 20 years, probably. Oh, yeah. listen, we're, listen, listen, we're sturdy. We used to work in underground. A couple of us have got tunneling. Yeah. So why don't we get in, booby trap it in case anyone follows us. Yeah, yeah. We've got a craft. You know, we can have an 18-month yeah. yeah, team. That's what I want. I've been watching a lot of 18 recently. So let's <laughs> modify the van. Oh, wait. We don't have one. Oh, we got a donkey. we got two donkeys. <laughs> modify the two. Yeah, let's modify the donkey. <laughs> Okay, so so yeah, we can work out the details with yeah. Domi. I think about the safety element and the, yeah. you know, all of that. But I think that's that's a solid. Get in and get it, because otherwise safety. it's for now. Okay, so the objective of the session is get in, get it, get to safety. Maybe dig yourselves out. Hope you don't kind of like do the whole classic kind of like dig the tunnel up to the surface, end up in the you know court we are the Yeah, shit that we took yeah. the wrong turn, boys. <laughs> I think getting out might be might be for another time, possibly depending on what happens. But I, but I think get in, get to safety, and hopefully find the thing. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Oh, so so when you're talking about getting to safety, you mean you feel it would be safer to be within the the um, the tomb yeah. than out in the camp. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Makes sense. Yeah, we we would feel safer. Yeah, especially if we make it dwarf sized pastures, because those of goblins were pretty big, weren't they? Yeah, 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 yeah. They were, they were, they were. So we, we, we get in, not like trolls, as... but they were hefty rugby playing. Trolls. Yeah, they'd have been recruited by Saruman for the Urukai without, without a thought. Cool. Your characters don't know that, by the way. That's how. That's my yeah, knowledge. Just... <laughs> that was the assessment I made. <laughs> so, what is Tolkien's stance on hobgoblins? Is, is he gone down the half man, half orc thing, or are they just? Big goblins, basically. Um, I don't know what Tolkien's stance is, but the stance of the Laughter of Dragons book is that they're larger than your average bear. Um, larger than your average... <laughs> or, or, <laughs> or, <laughs> um, and that's, that's and that they like picnic baskets. 
they probably do. Um, they probably like them more than their fellow orcs. Um, is is uh, is what I'm getting. Okay, cool. So so that's the object of the session. Um, so let's 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 get going on that then. Let's let's just, so what are the actions? What are the activities? What do you want to do? Matuk our way in. <clears throat> yeah. Dig dig dwarf size guess... just about holes for us to squeeze in. I guess we gotta just outline that with Domi as well. We need to yeah. to just make sure that he is still on fixed. on mission. Yep. Um and kind of almost ask his blood. It's like a courtesy thing, you know, he's the elder dwarven law master. There's gonna be some respect there. So we, we kind of need to make sure we're Yeah. So make, you, doing you, what he Yeah. So 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 um uh, Torg and, and Lothar, you kind of went across to where Sirk was by, by the entrance to the tomb and, and kind of as Sirk was inspecting it and he was kind of telling you his thoughts on, on that. You had that that kind of conflab, that, that kind of, you know, so what's the plan then, guys? And, and as you kind of turn around to, to confer with, with Domi to, to seek his, his view and his blessing to you can see that Domi has, has um, gone through um, the orcs kit has pulled out some what looks to be a water jug has kind of like taken a little sip of it is now gently kind of like pouring it into the lips of the uh the down dwarf it's kind of made a rudimentary but doesn't look too um too bad um kind of press against the wound and they starting to kind of gather materials up he's ripping the shirts um as you turn of some of the um the the men and it's trying to bind it just just more as you would as you've seen on the battlefield than in a hospital so clearly that you know he's had some you know field medic experience or what have you in this time but but he's doing that and he's just whispering a few words of succor to the um to the, to the ones down there no core you'll be fine we will we will we'll carry you if we need to back to our war Hey, Kyle, the glances, glances up at you. You are our saviors. What's what is your intention now? He he will he will soon pass, Master Domi. Um. <laughs> I'm sure. Even I've got more tact than that. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure Master Domi would appreciate the uh, the frankness. Um, you see, you see the recognition on his face, but also the the not. You know, whilst he accepts that's probably the case, he also accepts the fact that until it's happened, he's going to try and stop it from happening. That may be the case, but but the time time is upon us, Master Domi. The uh, the birds circling overhead will bring bring more foes. It's only a matter of time before, for those things, those orcish things, whatever they were, will return and bring others with them. And kind of like to reinforce your words, a, a large crow lands kind of out by the um, by the orc body, and kind of like hops its way along, kind of like takes a tentative look, and another one kind of swoops in and bats that one away and. Then he kind of like turns and says, "You speak, speak wisely. Uh, talk." I suggest we, uh, I suggest we continue your work and tunnel further. We've we've uh, assessed the the progress so far. Cirque, by his reckoning, says we could, if we work together. Those that are left. That can still wield matic or axe. We could break through the rocks in two hours. With the strength of you and your companions, that is likely to be the case. Torlin, and the other dwarf kind of like comes across, and um, then we kind of like pushes the the war ball to him. Look after Kor. Take him into the shade. We'll bring him in. We'll bring him in when we're ready. And he kind of turns to you and goes, let us, let us now start. Let us go. And kind of like, 
you know, we, with purpose, but oh fuck my back. <laughs> he takes yeah. it let, let, you, you start, I'll be over in a minute. No, he's in it. He's like on it, but he's also, you know, let's not forget the fact he's an old guy who's powered by willpower alone kind of thing. We we have a we have a spare mattock here, Lord Domi, which uh, is the perfect height for leaning on. Uh, uh, if you wish he, to delegate. He, he could give us real uh, progress by uh, supervising the dig a la workmen on a road where there's at least three of them stood around pointing at the man in the hole digging. Uh, and going, uh, not that rock. That rock's on the left. The Dalish, the Dalish, uh, the man, the Dalish men and their their construction. Um, he 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 he, he pitches in. Torg Torg will also reassure the um, Domi and the the other dwarf. Was it Ulan? Tolan. Tor, Tolan. He'll reassure them that we're not going to leave Kor there to rot, or leave him for the crows that will will take him with us. And that he would or want potentially to potentially lay him to rest in this place. Yeah, yeah. exactly. He'd want yeah, to be on the ground rather than left outside in the sun. There's a lot of trust between between Kor or Torlan and Dermy. And and, and Torlan Torlan's role, albeit he's much younger than Dermy, seems to be to kind of like offer and be there for Tor um for Kor. Uh, there's a couple of times he kind of pushes away the the crows and you know, throws um Throws a couple of uh, stones their way. Whilst a lot of the bodies of the men are kind of gathered around the entrance of the tomb, the orc is kind of a little bit further away um, on the side side of the hill. Um, and without masses of regard to you or to the stones throwing their way, the crows start to really kind of like have a go at it, kind of with the softness of the uh, the eyeballs and kind of start to scritch and pull kind of at, uh, some of the flesh. It's, it's quite harrowing to. even... Even to the creature that it's been, you know, to the corpse that it's been been done to, um, and after, you know, probably probably the sun kind of does crest through the sky, albeit weak as it is, um, for not much more than a couple of hours, you've created a dwarf-sized passage through that'll allow you to kind of um, to get through. Who 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 wants to go in first? I know, yeah. Okay, so digging so, around in the grounds, what I do. You've you've got one of these you know, really efficient dig chains that that you know dwarves learn from from year one kind of like you know one at the front kind of just pounding away pushing it back and then scooping it out and moving it down kind of thing. Dome is to to the extent of his energy and his capability allowing you kind of like massively impressed by just the machine like nature that he kind of like gets into this. Um, and and once you've kind of got enough that you think that you could. You could get down, but you could also lower core down, so a little bit bigger than you would perhaps otherwise do. Kind of, you can kind of glance down uh, and through, um, and circle. You squeeze yourself through, and then you drop the the other kind of three or four feet down where you've kind of not dug it out onto onto stone steps, stone stairs that descend downwards, and they're covered in uh, this heavy black ash, so that it's, it's more of a more of a slope than it is a set of set of steps um and in fact you have to start to move and push some of that down to create enough of a gap as it's kind of like choked itself up up in there um and the light spills in but it's a weak light anyway and it doesn't spill very far before you feel the darkness what is welcome, someone got a torch what is welcome is the coolness of the temperature down here a torch. Anyone passed. got a torch? Torch is passed down to you. Or, or as Doom Buddy pointed out, a crowbar would have been really useful. <laughs> well, you know, if if you've got a good mattock, Doom Bunny, it's it does both jobs. I just like to they, they also mentioned they also mentioned there was some crow shadowing. <laughs> <laughs> crow shadowing. I, I I'm. I'm Merely like the fact that old woman number three has got a job doing voiceover work as crows now as well. Jeez. I was going to say, it's Margaret. <laughs> she's she's versatile. She, she's she's kind of like you know she had to diversify with the with the uh, pandemic that that kind of swooped in. And she actually knows the dying dwarf by name. <laughs> God, God, uh, come over here! I want to pick your eyes out. 
a, a crowbar at least would have given the crows an opportunity to kind of get a cool beer yeah. as they were pecking away. Just lean on, lean on it, have a beer. Is that to distract them from the from yeah. the eyeballs? Is it like a mild so. bar for crows? Or is it the the actually the eyeballs are like the olives in their martinis when they're drinking them? That's exactly. Uh, right. It's a bar where crows go and have a yeah. Uh, also, uh, Peter Cake would also like to know where the Cthulhu shirt came from, Joe. Oh, uh, somewhere on the internet, man. I don't know. It's one of those <laughs> things. Cool, good stuff. Cool. Um, yes, I have a torch. I will then light said torch and make my way carefully down said scree style slope of stairs. Yeah, okay. What's everybody else doing? I'm just uh, hammering away or mattocking away. Yeah. Well, so no, no, we're, stop. we've already dug the hole. <laughs> we're, go, we're going vertically straight down or thereabouts, right? Oh. Yeah. So, Downstairs. So, yeah. So, so you've you so you've got the entrance way. There's a lot of rock up against the entrance way that's been cleared by Dermy before you arrived, and you've just you've now cleared like essentially like a central channel. So you can imagine you yeah. kind of like got a central channel there, but you cleared enough height for you to go to get through then there's just a little bit of a drop down onto the stairs where you've got the residual of the earth that was backed against it and then there's all the kind of like choking ash dust that spewed down into the into the stair so well. Domi yeah. goes down second sprightly um, after Cirque. after Cirque. so he's keen so yeah. so I'm um Torg is Torg is wary Torg is uh he was never at home in the mines in the Grey Mountains, he never felt like a, you know, like a delver, like like a lot of his kindred. Um, my my first concern is is whether we could be tracked and followed easily. Also, we're we're bringing Core, who is wounded, about to die, and you know, so the logistics of that and kind of sealing up our entrance to a degree where we can get out but something that was looking for us wouldn't be able to just waltz straight in and say that was where they were yeah so as you're assessing the scene and you kind of like weighing up these 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 concerns that that are a leader's concerns um more than anything else um you you know that it's going to be quite hard to cover this up because it's a very obvious kind of like channel that's been dug through there, and even just the way that the the, the earth has been kind of like taken the, the, the and, and just like left to one side, it's almost like there's a big of a bit of a slag heap there because it's just the natural way in which you kind of like put this stuff up. Um, so, so getting core through, you know, you create enough space for that, but it's going to be really quite hard, and and it is earth, so it's it's it's. You know, would you, you could try to stack it up, but it's going to be loose, so there's it's going to be tricksy, I guess, is what I'm saying. Yeah, you spend, um, spend a, a fair amount of time, probably at least as much time as you were digging, trying to make it look more natural or what have you. I don't think that's a good use of time. So, I Moving think trap it. Talk, yeah, Torg's take on that would be, um, while everyone forges ahead, do you know what that is? Whatever's going to happen here, we've done what we what we're setting out to do core is probably you know making core somewhat comfortable and whether i can fashion him some kind of um uh you sure. know like not a stretcher but something that we can carry him a little bit more easily with a litter is it a litter yeah yeah like a litter, litter. yeah yeah something or a like sedan that. chair <laughs> <laughs> A well, those ones with yeah, full, full a, canopy, a GT a Continental with uh, with uh, <laughs> with aircon, some kind of backpack, you know, well like um, C three PO on the back of Chewbacca. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. or the uh, the little guy on top of the big guy in Mad Max three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Two um, go in, one comes out. So. So, so the easiest thing to do would be some form of like litter or or, or stretcher, essentially. Um, to be perfectly honest. Yeah. Yeah, but it's it's trying to do that quickly without slowing everyone down at a minimal, minimal input. Just something that we can. Yeah. 
Okay. Make sure we can get him around there safely. Pass, passing him through would probably be easier if we had him on a stretcher anyway. Yeah, yeah. So, so. Rather than just trying to shove this wounded guy through a hole. <laughs> so, so a crafts roll. Um, okay. Let's say, let's say TN 16 because you're trying to do it at speed and you've got limited materials. All fair. Three dots in craft. It is a favoured skill. So, you know, one day I'll be rolling two feet dice for this. In the summer. But not Oof. today is not that day. Not today, no. Uh, so, 9, 13, 16. On the nose. Nothing special about it, but it's a straight up. It works. It's rolling. Yeah, it works. So, so you, you kind of... Um, you head over to where the the campfire was, and you get the little tripod that was used to um, to to hang the pots from, and you you break that down. You get that. You get some more of the shirts as like um, uh, canvas across, and between you and tall, and you kind of like lifting across. And you can see that the wound is starting to get quite fetid. Um, either a quality of the heat or a quality of the the air, it's starting to kind of like get a little bit gangrenous really quickly. Um, or maybe the quality of the blade, you're, you're not quite sure, but ah, 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 he, he kind of screams, and it's not a sound that many dwarves make, so the pain must be must be getting getting to him. Kind of, you see the the effect it has on Torlan, who um, who kind of um, it winces as he hears, hears this, but you get him kind of up there, and then gently and and much. With, with a lot less aggro than you would have done if you were lifting and carrying, you're kind of able to move him on so you minimise the suffering that he, uh, okay. that he kind of faces as you kind of um, push him push him through. I guess I don't have many words of reassurance for him, but um, if Torg can offer him something, it's that he will uh, he will come to rest in a in a, a once sacred place where his ancestors delved deep. Which is better than dying in the sunlight with crows pecking at your eyes with uh, with the green skins. You're not you're not quite sure how much of that kind of got through the the fever that seems to be kind of like warming up his his brow. Um, and Torlan was really reassured by the first part of what you said, and less less comfortable about the second part. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, there we have it. Clearly uh, dead, <laughs> but at least you won't get pecked to death. <laughs> um. Uh, so, so as these guys are doing that, what what are you doing, Lofta? What's what are you you are you into? I'm I'm probably just going to help get him to the into the site. There's there's nothing else I could see myself doing. Um, it just makes sense to just give everybody else a hand. Yeah. Okay. Dig dig deeper. Okay. So so are you going through the channel you've made and just dropping down into the stairs and seeing what what Cirque and Dermy are doing? Yeah, it's, yeah. Just to, if if I can get in and search, perhaps to to look for you know where we want to go. What is this place? And yeah, okay. that kind of thing. So to your everlasting disappointment, there isn't a flagon of ale to be found. Um, but but you can see that Domi and Cirque have got themselves into into almost a giddy excitement as they've kind of made their way down um, down the, the 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 ashen slope really. Um, kind of like the dust scattering in front of them as circuits holding the the light out, kind of the the light radiating off the very many dust fragments, and it starts to just to choke up into the air. So you kind of come through this billowing cloud, looking really quite heroic, as as you stride stride through this this kind of ashen cloud billowing behind you. But you come down to to the bottom of the staircase, sir, and there's the there's a grey um, uh, a grey stone. Um, door two sets of doors double doors look as if they open away from you um, and there are four rope knots that are kind of like wrapped around kind of entwined keeping the door shut and there are wax seals um, that bear a sigil um, a very kind of kingly sigil you recognize it immediately as the sigil of Girion, having spent enough time in dale and having kind of gone through a lot of the the old architecture and these these this wax has been melted and, and remains um, in position over the over the rope that is kind of wrapped around the doors binding them binding them together you can see that they're, they've been 
dried and the crusty from the aridness of the um, of the air around here. Uh, I'll look for a way to cut the ropes without okay. disturbing the wax seal, because it's oh, okay. part of the provenance of what we're looking for. Yeah. Okay. So so the wax seals and the rope itself look very fragile. Yeah, it looks as if you're gonna to have to be really careful, really kind of like tender, tender with this, and and kind of like um, kind of looking at it, you think your best bet is probably to kind of like cut around one of the wax seals and try and scoop it off into into your hand or into like a cloth or something like that, just to try to keep it as intact as possible. Um, that's what you you kind of think. Dermy is just like looking at it and just is almost breathing in the um, breathing in the um, the air and the the ambiance. You can hear Loftar kind of like bundling down the stairs. It's probably best to get it done before he <laughs> before he just matics his way through the door <laughs> before he takes route one. Yeah. Um, so probably another craft roll actually, I think, to to kind of see if you can kind of get this off. Um, standard target. Oh dear. Uh, that that'll be an Iron Sauron. Oh okay. Plus an eight. But I'm gonna I'm gonna spend a point of hope because my favoured uh, it's a favoured skill craft, and I add a nine to it. Wow. Okay, yeah. so 17, but an eye of Sauron. Yes. So as you kind of like cut this through and cut, it kind of starts to crumble quite deftly, though. You kind of pull it and you get you get it, but it's not it's not maintained the um the structure that you'd want. It's 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 broken down into a few fragments, and the other wax seals of the rope kind of just slip, and so they just break and fall, fall away uh, into it. So you, so it, it's not like um it's not like dust. It's mm. the substantive fragments, but you just need to rebuild them, kind of, uh, and the others have kind of Shit, fallen. Not what I hoped, but um, uh, at least it would have. At least we can still demonstrate what it showed. Yeah. Okay. And then I'll uh, deposit. I'll give it to Domi to look after. Yeah. Okay. okay. I'm sure Domi, he's got Domi more takes the it care kind of like Pushes it into into some of the pockets he has in his robes. I'll. Take care of and I'll, um, Fantastic. Check the doors to see if there's any sort of booby trap or anything before pushing them open. I don't know how you do that in Tor. Make make like a make an investigation check. Search. <laughs> um, search. Um, search. Yeah, search would make sense. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, search. Yeah. That's such a classic yeah, DD. So yeah. traps. Check for traps. Yeah. Uh, 16, uh, 21, 22 extraordinary success. You're kind of like looking around and just kind of like you know, really kind of paid a great deal of attention to this. So from your perspective, um, Lovetar, um, Dermy seems to be like mm. snorting this stuff that uh, Circus <laughs> just kind of like given to him and like really kind of get, taking a hit from it. Um, and his scholars. And, uh, and circus, I suppose it's, it's a door, but circus like kind of like carefully edging around it, kind of like feeling at the top, kind of like blowing through the cracks. Do you, do you need a hand with that? Look, can, looking at it for sigils. There's there's a bit of the stonework, and he's kind of like trying to work out if this is actually a sigil or, or just the way that the grain of the stone is. Um, you don't think that there are any traps or anything um, like that about the door. So. In which case, uh, can I can I use either old law? To turn my extraordinary success into a final pip, do you reckon? My experience of dealing with these environments before or tunneling from um, being as his background is like digging through old places, looking for old bits of dwarven I don't info. think old law because it's it's an old rhymes door. of law. I don't looking think rhymes of law either. Um, tunneling, tunneling then? I'll let tunneling go. I'll let tunneling go because I've got. Cool. My, my spine is made of balsa wood, which is. <laughs> and he says, whenever I, I, go, yeah, Katie, you can have a snack. <laughs> um, In which case, I will shove the doors open. Well, the doors, to shove open. the doors open. The doors open as if they were shut yesterday. They're kind of just. Good old dwarven hinges. 
<laughs> that says what? That's exactly what Cirque says. And everybody around him nods in <laughs> appreciation. <laughs> Look at the action on that. Look at Smooth. Oh, I tell you what. Double joy. Never mind that dragon behind the door. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The dragon's like, oh, it's pretty good, pretty good hinge work. Didn't even squeak. Yeah, I mean, it's been a few hundred years. Um, okay. I, mean, um, I should have had Loaf Tower investigate, is what the advice is from chat is. <laughs> you should have had Loaf Tower It's what he it. does. It is. It is what he does. Um, Domi can't be held back as the doors kind of like move open. He kind of like, he's into the room, kind of like looking around. He kind of you know, grabs, grab, grabs, um, uh, grabs the torch almost almost aggressively to try to pull it off you to kind of like come over to, to the bit over there. Um, it opens out into a, a large vestibule, a dark rectangular chamber with a low roof. It's a vaulted roof and you can see the vaults coming up from the ground. Um, the walls are decorated with wonderful murals, not dwarven artwork at all. And they, they depict a, a Dalish lord holding court over many noble looking men there's um dwarves and sylvan elves kind of paying homage um to them and presenting gifts at the feet of the the dalish uh, lords um and the dalish lords are offering kind of their bounty back to the dwarves uh, and to the elves um it's you've not seen its like in dale You've seen fragments of that kind of artwork in Dale, usually in the, the kind of parts of Dale that were ravaged by Smaug and have then been built over. Um, and it's a scene reminiscent of the facade of, um, of King Bard's um, kind of palace, but that is nothing to the, to the art that's captured here. It calls to mind the um, creatures made um, in um, tapestry by Kelder. Uh, and her needle and the vivid nature and the the kind of realism of it um and it's kind of i guess in the real world it's like um some of the renaissance art where there's these big crowds and the kind of like you know the the three magi um uh, are visiting and, and that kind of kind of stuff um so circ with your old lore and you know stuff like that you you would imagine that the people depicted are real people when in fact you think that that might be Thranduil, and that does look like, you know, um, he's not aged a day. Like, like that. That's you. You kind of go in, and then this mural spans this wall, and this wall is probably thirty or forty kind of like feet. Um, in Thranduil, we can get it out of here. Is it like painted on like a Banksy wall? Um, <laughs> Is it is it painted onto the wall, Paul, or it's not a tapestry? It's not a tapestry, mean... no. So you think that it is, in fact, painted onto the wall okay. using some form of technology that the Renaissance Magic artists paint. would be would be incredibly happy about having, given how badly frescoes actually um, survived through the ages. It's it's more painted yeah. directly onto the stone, and the dry nature of the stone had already taken the moisture well, from it, so lot, it didn't rot. A lot of the problem is uh, is the the following generations attempting to restore them. Yeah. <laughs> yes. especially elderly women in a in in a churches. That is so, exactly right. So, um, so, Talk is going to be mightily impressed, but not perhaps not kind of fixating on the detail of this. And he's, he's I'm moving towards Domi because I'm just wary. I don't want him to kind of get too distracted and end up in in danger somehow. Yeah, and 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 you've brought Core down, and you kind of like rested him on his uh, there, and and Torlan is is there with him, um, and Lothar is kind of just stood there expecting yeah. it all to. Is there anywhere we can go? We push the door shut behind us. Yeah, the doors swing shut behind you. Is there any way of blocking them with anything? How big's the room? It's pretty substantial. You think it's probably 50 feet long, maybe 20 feet across, but it's only like maybe 6 feet tall. Yeah, so it's massive then. It's three, <laughs> four times your height. Look at all that wasted space. <laughs> is, it, um, is it completely open or are there like supporting the pillars? The supporting pillars. So if you think of it as um, as uh, like um, an undercroft 
or, or kind of um, like uh, the area beneath the church floor where it's got the pillars kind of like rising up every so often and they rise yeah. up with that kind of like curved shape um, to support it. Yeah. yeah, I'm looking for a way to move on really from, from that place. So the only light source is the one that Dermy's got and Dermy's kind of like shining it and it's kind of like reading uh, through and he's starting to try to narrate the story of the uh, of the picture. And he would, he's kind of, oh my, this is... This must be Girion and this this must be his son. And look there, there. You can see that the, the dwarves are presenting the coat of mail. Mm. We must be moving on, don't we? Whoa. Let, 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 this is what we came here to find. Let's we must let Domi linger a piece. This is this is his uh his life's work to be here. Go go oh. scout ahead, Lothar, see if there's another way out of it. Yeah, sounds good. In the dark, While we translate this, yeah. And I can just get have material for another torch, <laughs> yeah. Can I get a torch? And... Yeah, yeah, you can, you can kind of burn it up. And as you kind of like close the doors, you can see that the on on um on the wall, um, the corners of the wall opposite the the kind of like entrance way, there are two stone statues and they're armored men, um, with folded arms and, and bowed heads. And you can see that kind of uh, as part of the stone statue, there's this insignia of um, of Dale and knightly orders. Um, you know, kind of that that kind of thing as they're there, and just arms crossed and head bowed. Um, I'm going to take a, a closer look at them and take a rubbing of the insignias on them, if needed. Oh, the insignias on them. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's so, always rubbing statues. <laughs> he is, isn't it? I'll, I'll have rubbing a good sigil. Yeah, okay. What 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 are you rubbing them with? Is our interest? Just no, taking a rubbing. <laughs> oh, you're taking a rubbing. All right, okay. just checking, just checking. I'm a taker, not a giver. <laughs> anyway, moving along. Um, uh, yeah, okay. Okay. And it's cool here. It is cool. It sounds cool. That is pretty fucking cool. Dome is... Dome is quite excited by all so so we'll, so we'll also be buzzing <laughs> yeah that's why he's he's going around he's documenting everything he can yeah okay so yeah. how's how, how's core looking at the minute not great he's developed a little bit of a well developed a fever um and the wound doesn't look brilliant and I, as you kind of like bring a torch across you can see the reflection of the sweat Kind of in there, and his eyes are quite sunken back. Okay. We have to fear him turning into a zombie and trying to attack us. He's put his poison. Cirque says, as he's doing a rubbing, what do you think yeah. you could turn into a zombie? <laughs> I, I think he's poisoned, you know. I think it's the uh, it's the don't you have to suck the poison out the wound? Well, or is that snakes? I can never remember. You can you can have a go if you want. So. I'm I'm rubbing at the minute. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Put my hands full. Well, let's let's drag him a little bit further. I was going to suggest we leave him here and let him die. It's, it's, I can think of a worse place to be buried. Put it that way. I mean, yeah, it's. It has uh, it has some weight to it. This room, mm. yeah. Is okay. there any way out? Other um, than... The doors that you came through um, are currently all that you can see. That you've not done a particularly thorough review of the room, and you haven't really been down yeah. to the other end either yet. I'll, yeah, no, I want to do a, a thorough search then. I want I want to find, because I'm getting anxious mm -hmm. now and a bit worried the hobgoblins are at the back. Yeah. There's no way back for me, at least, so we need to push forward and trying to look for okay. another way out, possibly. Make me, uh, make me a search roll, then, um, as Lothar starts to kind of, like, really scout around. So, so, so there are no other entrances. You very quickly yeah. established that with just a quick Kind of like look around, so you start to mm. to see what more you can um you can. You so can get do. my spyglass out, put my. Shell yes, on that. And part of your anxiety is that you just suddenly remember the fucking donkeys. Shit! Mm. You just left them out there with no food and no water or anything. RSBC will be on the case. 
Sure. Um, I've got. <laughs> I was like, fuck the donkeys. You're right. <laughs> He's actually thinking, shit, we left all that food out there. <laughs> I've got 15. 15? Yeah. Okay, you... You kind of... You're spending quite a bit of time kind of looking at this, um, but you can't find... You can't find anything um, as you're as you're kind of like looking. But you can kind of keep on keep on going um, because it is a, a fairly substantial mm. substantial room. Oh, I'm, I'm determined. I mean, as, as in a way, I'm, I'm going to try and find the solution one way or the other so <laughs> one way or the, the way. other as he sharpens yeah. his mat <laughs> absolutely one way or the other. Um, so while are... domi's while domi's doing this stuff i'm just sort of meticulously going through yeah i'm sure that thing can move yeah if if domi's okay if he's contentedly busying himself with the with the mural and the the tale that that tells i guess Torg will take a slightly different tack in that he's thinking of it as a problem to solve. So his limited knowledge of kind of dwarven uh, architecture is that often there's um, there's almost a puzzle element to it. So they they would kind of leave a, a kind of puzzle for people to solve. You know, like in the the door to Moria is um, is sealed with quite a simple puzzle based spell speak friend and enter so he'll be he'll be looking for kind of signs that point to the the nature of the puzzle if there were one yeah and the statue might be a key to that they might be a part of that doom Doom bunny points out that letting the donkeys wander off into danger is very tolkien because that's what happened to old build apparently (laughs) yeah that's right isn't it to talking about the, the doors of Moria, it's on your way home, Bill. You'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, You'll... don't mind that big uh, tentacle thing in the water. Exactly, yeah, the huge <laughs> tentacle watcher. The watcher in the water. That's got to be a good sign. Yeah. Um, okay, so 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 you're kind of like trying to sit and trying to you know, work work out what the puzzle is so you can then solve, solve the puzzle. Exactly, um, yeah. I'm pushing for a riddle roll, essentially. Hmm. Yeah, that, that's 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 cool. Um, so yeah, go ahead, give me that riddle roll. Okay, two dots in riddle. It's worth a pop. Yeah. yeah. Eleven. I could. Uh, I could get it to fifteen if I spend a point of hope. Do it. Yep. We should probably get fellowship hope and all that kind of admin as well, shouldn't we? Oh, yeah. So I'll spend a point of hope and then regain it with the fellowship. So we've now got three fellowship points left. Cool. Uh, so 15 straight up success. Yeah. Okay, cool. If so- I have yeah, so you kind of like looking at, at the tomb, and and there's the substantial number of clues that it is dwarven construct, or at least influenced by by dwarven um, construction techniques, and and you kind of put yourself in the mind of what you understand from from the purpose of this, which is you know, to be a tomb. So, on the one hand, it needs to be protected from um, from tomb robbers, from people who would seek to plunder it. But on the other, it needs to be accessible for people to be able to pay respects and the, just the practicalities of of uh, the dead. Um, so you you would imagine that there must be there must be a way that you can kind of access the the, the inner sanctum. Um, and as you kind of like you know, look in and pace it around, and, um, and as Lovetor is kind of busy banging with his mattock and so I can do me a busy kind of like oh and look at this you can see that the mountain is diminished in relation to the city of Dale this is clearly a work to to, to make the Dale um the, the city look more grand than the mountain oh and did you see master that the light is coming from the east so this is an early morning scene and the morning's important to the elves so they'll have traveled and, and all that kind of like um, important exegesis. information um, and, mm-hmm. and kind of like you know trying to try and find the esoteric message and whatnot and you're there kind of you know, work out what, what the puzzle of this this room might be 
focusing on the two statues that that reside and whilst their 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 faces are downwards they they are kind of like facing kind of like towards the back end of the room down one of the channels you know, made by the by the pillars um and you start to inspect the doors and you can see on the doors kind of like um there there's a there's a slight indentation of another kind of like figure in a similar way kind of like looking down but with an outreaching outreaching hand um and you're not quite sure what kind of grabs you but you kind of like you, know, you 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 wonder if these are three aisles that you would kind of you know progress down you know you've got experience of stately occasions and you would progress down the aisle like in the great hall and they would be very natural for there to be um the gateway into the next stage at the end of these aisles so you kind of like go down and whereas Lothar is kind of like over on this side you kind of like start to to kind of give me the um you know have a little look through in the center of that so so make a make a search roll but roll the feet dice twice okay take the best result <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for clarifying. <laughs> it's rolling really twice. You, you did Add all this work, there. and it's made it worse. Yeah, yeah. Okay, You're got, just confused. Well, so we've got 11, uh, 17. Great success. And let's roll the feet die again. Uh, I have Sauron. Yeah, I'll take the seven. <laughs> you feel Sauron go kind of like coming around. You're like, nope. Um, what was that? <laughs> and as you stand in front of what you, you're the central. Um, aisle where you in your mind's eye uh, at the at the point where the um where the the body was processed to lie in state they would have been brought down here there would have probably been the same lords depicted in the mural would have been either side um you you kind of like feel just out into the wall and you feel there's a bit of the stern where you can just press it inwards and a doorway opens Mm. I think I found the way forward. I was just getting my uh, AP for my riddle roll, by the way. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's cool. Yeah. It opens out into a roughly hewn tunnel that descends deeper and further into the ground. Deeper, darker, further all of those D words. Even oh, further. Oh, Dangerous. Sir. Yeah. Do we, uh, D. do we want to leave core here? Maybe how's Tolan feeling about everything at the minute? Tolan is not, not really the adventurous type. This this is kind of like not what he signed up for, but it's where he's at. So you know he's he's he he's very happy to stay with Core. As soon as kind of like you open the door, Domi's attention is kind of like with you um, as well as he okay. kind of like. Um, Should we leave you. To, leave Tolan and Core here in this in this big room with the mural while we go on further. You're his friend, Tolan. He would want you here in his last minutes. We we are causing him pain and anguish the further we go. This next stage will be will be perilous and, and hard on him. Aye, and Tolan kind of gets gets one of the swords is is taken from um from one of the men and he's kind of got the mattock that he was used to 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 dig with. Um, and he he I didn't hobbit the plot. hobbit. That is about to enter. Dilla da, dilla da, dilla da. So, so, Torlan says, "Yes, yes, I'll, I'll stay. I, I can hear sounds from outside. The, 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 let us just hope it is the crows and nothing more it evil. Is the crows. You go on ahead. It cannot be too far. I will, I will." And his screams are becoming delirious now. I will have to settle him. <laughs> and kind of like just gets um get some some water and just kind of like pause it and kind of pats his 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 head down. It is good that he will pass here, in a tomb, built by our forefathers. And that's why we'll call the episode. 
Um, so I don't know actually which episode number we're on. It's I think it's twenty three, but don't quote me on that. It could be twenty four. I think even numbers start. Anyway, right. So thank you very much for watching us. Um, it's been great. Bye. It's been a ride. Bye. It's just so cheap. Right. Okay. Now for those who are watching on the stream, we're not actually going. It's crazy. I know, but this is like behind the scenes. This is the after party. <laughs> it's wrong. <laughs>